Mystic of the Sands uh, commented on my video yesterday about nihilism uh, in interesting ways, and it's kind of interesting to um, go through um, several of the points that he raises, or that he points to philosophers uh, who have raised them. Um, one of the interesting uh, misconceptions out there, I believe to be a misconception, is that, say, perspectivism, or anakantavada, or siadvada, I guess, um, are not to be confused with nihilism or solipsism, um, is in that <clears throat> perspectivism says that there may be an infinite number of ways to view uh, reality, or even a certain thing, or circumstance, or person, or activity, or whatever. Um, that doesn't mean that because there's an infinite number, they are all wrong, um, or that none of them are um, exhaustive, or whatever. It's a it's a subtle point, but it's an important one. I think it's um, it's not so much saying that as a solipsist would say that there's nothing outside of my own mind. Uh, it's just that there's there's lots there may be lots outside of my own mind, but there's no way for me to look at it minus my own perspective. How do you gain everyone's perspective? The image of the Vishvarupa comes to mind where. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, where um, Arjuna asks Krishna, in effect, what is the universe? And Krishna answers by showing him every possible perspective of every last thing in the universe simultaneously. <laughs> um, every potential thing, every possible idea, every possible perspective. And of course, it almost drives Arjuna out of his mind. It almost actually kills him. Um, <clears throat> now this is not the same thing as saying here's reality, boom it's just a big void, no it's not it's saying that an infinitely varied or multifaceted universe is not an empty universe, it's just a universe that just keeps going now <clears throat> what that translates to into uh, in, in terms of our own perception of it well again the Gita I think has it right you can't really equip the normal human to see things that way but what it essentially does is it, it sort of prevents or it's I won't even say it's a compromise between absolutism and solipsism or absolutism and nihilism it's not even a blending of the two. I would say that it's sort of a third sort of holistic option where you can take um, infinite possibility and merge it with um, non-solipsism, I guess. Or merge it with uh, the possibility of endless points of view that may not be necessarily invalid simply because they're often contradictory. <clears throat> there are certain examples um, that you can look at, for example, um, like just base examples. Uh, look at the issue right now about the con Confederate flag in the southern United States. Some people s insist that that's just a symbol of the South and Southern heritage, and it's nothing more than that. Some people insist that it is just the symbol of Southern heritage and nothing more than that, but you get the impression that they believe it is something more than that, but you can't really prove it. Some people say that that flag is simply the symbol of Southern white oppression of African Americans. Um, some people say that it is, but they're not, they don't think that it means that today or it is trying to put that vibe across. Um, when it flies over the state capitol, I believe it's in North Carolina, but I can't remember. There's just so many ways to look at that issue, and it all depends on what's in the person's head when they do something. It, I, I suppose the main thing is it's, um, it's a caution against hasty judgment and hasty conclusions. Um, <clears throat> it's not so much saying that there's nothing out there. Again, you, you, you've got to sort of 
remember that Anikantavada and its views to say non-contradiction and identity are not the Western ones. And again, with perspectivism, i.e. Nietzsche's sort of ideas along the same line, uh, he doesn't say that anybody's wrong or that there is a right one. He just says, I have my perspective and you have yours. Um, Mystic of the Sands also quotes um, uh, Timon, uh, a, um, a, an apostle or a pupil of um, of Pyro, the original Pyro, not uh, Pyro three seventeen. Um, when he's referring to um, truth statements or falsehood statements, as for pragmata i.e. things, matters, questions, topics, they're all adiaphora, undifferentiated, and astathmeta, unstable, unbalanced, not measurable, and aneprikrita, almost sounds Indian, unjudged, unfixed, undecidable. Therefore, neither are sense perceptions nor our opinions, doxai, tell us the truth or lie about pragmata, so we certainly should not rely on them to do it. Rather, we should be adoxastus, without views, aclineus, uninclined, towards this side of that, and acradantus, unwavering, in our refusal to choose saying about every single one that it no more is than it is not, or it both is and it is not, or it neither is nor is not. That, again, I don't think I agree with. Um, <clears throat> being without views? No, I, I, I have tons of views, um, and I'm sure we all do. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to sort of nihilistically say that um, every view is wrong per se and again you w we're stuck in this western logical trap of saying something is true false or neither I guess but true or false you know non-contradiction and identity and those two things kind of and, and excluded middle of course these sort of hem us in from the very beginning and I think that it's sort of a, a a birth defect of logic, um, <clears throat> in that from then on in everything is kind of tainted, as we've gotten into this mindset of true, false, true, false, right, wrong, black, white, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and if um, Pyro is saying we should be adox adoxestus uh, without views, I would disagree. I would say we can't be without views. Um, Although I suppose one could say that in the more advanced or more, I don't know, involved states of meditation or um, deep pondering on the, na the nature of reality itself, one could say that being without views simply means being without prejudices. Um, you're not really saying that any view is right, but you're not saying that any view is wrong, but you're not saying that views are meaningless. It's so, uh, an important distinction there, I think. Um, <clears throat> or we could also be talking about, say, the public versus the private, or the outer life versus the inner. And by inner life, again, I mean Schopenhauer's life, uh, Schopenhauer's inner life. The inner life that consists of, say, your, your mind consciously manipulating your body. That's your inner life. Your own experiences, your own qualia, that sort of thing. That's my understanding of how Schopenhauer... Um, related or explained his view of the inner life. It's quite an atheistic view. Um, and then there's the outer life, the stuff that you can talk about, the stuff that you have to negotiate with other people about. I can say that in as much as I'm sure of anything, I'm pretty sure that I currently have a slight pain right here. I cannot prove that. Um, I have no way of proving it, but nobody can disprove it. Now, in a case like that, I suppose proof would be irrelevant because we're talking about the inner life. We're talking about qualia. We're talking about um, 
We're talking about experience. That's neither provable nor disprovable. How do I prove to somebody that I feel pain, or that I am feeling depressed, or that I am feeling happy, or that um, I believe something, or I don't believe something? Um, <clears throat> how do I prove that? You cannot. But it doesn't mean that it's not happening. That's the inner things, which, just because they're not demonstrable, doesn't mean that they're not happening, or that they're irrelevant, or whatever. So, it's not nihilism to say that there's an infinite number of perspectives. Because me sitting here, say, feeling the pain in my um, right forearm, it's not a serious pain, it's an irritating pain. Um, my feeling that pain is not going to have the same effect as me explaining it to somebody else. There's limits to human empathy. Um, but, again, I don't think many other people would be interested in disputing whether or not I felt that pain. Um, kind of as an aside, I've been involved in debates of this nature in, in the Union where somebody is getting uh, disciplined or questioned, say, on absenteeism or something like that, and they say, I just felt like hell. I didn't want to, you know, I couldn't come to work or whatever. What if that person did just feel like a bag of dirt and just couldn't bring themselves to go to work? What if they seriously couldn't? Okay, then, oh, well, that's what sick time is for, right? But if you just, you know, wanted to sit home and watch TV all day and decided to invent a mystery illness, uh, <clears throat> you, there's really no way of proving one way or another. And they can only get you, I think, in the employer's case by building a dossier over time and coming up with balance of probabilities, etc. Um... But, again, it's neither provable nor disprovable that somebody is having a certain experience, that somebody is having a vague sense of malaise or, I guess, um, atavistic joy or whatever. Um, just because it's not demonstrable or not provable doesn't mean it's not happening at the level of experience. Um... So no, I don't think that perspectivism and or uh, anekantavada uh, result in um, nihilism. In fact, I would say they're, they're quite different things. Um, <clears throat> I can see how sort of somebody who is still sort of chained to the idea of the three uh, basic rules of logic, um, identity, uh, non-contradiction, and excluded middle, they could see that as nihilism. Um, but I would say that that's more a function of their blinkered thinking than any actual um, nihilism inherent in a perspectivistic point of view.